Once again, since I didn't have time to present myself, my name is Mathieu P, and I am the uh, Iraxis Links Japan uh, representative, uh, and we are organizing this uh, event here, hosted by uh, Tokyo Metropolitan University. So, uh, let me have a few minutes to uh, explain a little bit the Euraxis and especially the Euraxis Links Japan initiative, uh, especially our actions here in Japan. Oh, if it works. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Uh, anyway, Euraxis is a Yes, it works. Uh, Euraxis is a European Commission initiative, so we are not a private company. We are an initiative of a public office, basically European Commission, to support researchers uh, in their career up and in their research project uh, through international cooperation and through mobility at a uh, global scale. So it's about being more international and it's about uh, breaking barriers to uh, mobility and to research cooperation, research knowledge, basically. So you might ask yourselves, wait, this is a uh, European initiative, so what did they do in Japan? Okay, so right here in Japan, one part of the uh, huge Euraxis initiative is called Euraxis Links, especially Euraxis Links Japan, and what we do here is we try to help anyone uh, interested in research cooperation or in mobility between Europe and Japan. And specifically we focus on uh, two different tasks. First one being uh, providing uh, tailored information to any researcher, to any student, any nationality, any discipline interested in Europe-Japan research cooperation and mobility. Second, networking through events such as the Science Slam, for example, networking so that people can know each other and maybe it may lead to uh, a next job, for example, or a new research cooperation. And of course, this is a European Commission initiative, so everything from the user point of view we are doing is for free. So, for example, first point, information. What kind of information do we uh, provide? Well, information on Horizon 2020, the uh, flagship uh, EU initiative for research and innovation. And beyond, as well. Uh, if you are a young student, maybe you're interested in a grant or a fellowship to go study in Europe. If you are a postdoctoral or a PhD candidate, or an early stage researcher, maybe you're interested in a research stay abroad. If you're a more senior uh, researcher or a professor, if you have your own research team, maybe you're interested in uh, uh, taking part into some collaborative project or uh, getting some research funding, etc., etc. We cover all of the uh, range that may interest a researcher in his or her career. Examples. Well, I am guessing many of you know about this, Erasmus Plus, for uh, students, uh, master students, even PhD students in some cases, uh, to go abroad. I am sure you also know about this because uh, uh, Dr. Kuczynski uh, just had a few words about this, Marie reactions for uh, PhD, uh, full PhD fellowships, for postdoctoral uh, fellowships for research states, for researchers even. Maybe you also know about ERC, European Research Council grants for excellent researchers with uh, substantial funding uh, and um, a very competitive grant. We give information on all of these. And since it's not enough, we also give information on all potential programs that may be of use for um, research cooperation or researcher mobility between Japan and Europe. And since I say between Japan and Europe, both ways. So we also uh, give information on many of these programs that I'm sure here in Japan uh, many of you already know about, but some people in Europe, maybe they don't. Anyway, so how do we do that? Well, one big tool we have right now 
is our monthly newsletter. So maybe some of you are already members of our Erasmus Links Japan community, but if you're not, maybe it would be interesting for you to get in because you would get this every month information on European programs, on Japanese programs, anything that you could use uh, for research cooperation or for mobility. And more, of course. SNT policy development, some news in this newsletter, um, some jobs information as well, uh, events such as this one you would not miss if you are uh, 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 registered to our community. And of course, since we are in 2015 now, well, we do have a website and we do uh, have a well, presence on social media such as Twitter, for example. And on these, you can get day-to-day uh, -day information on our activities. Second item on which we focus is providing people in Japan, mostly, uh, but of all nationalities and again, all research fields, uh, networking opportunities. And these go often, very often, through uh, networking events or science communication related events, such as the Science Lab or uh, EU programs related events. But all of these uh, are information platforms and networking platforms for people with interest in European Japan cooperation. And that's one of the reasons why uh, you are all here today and the slammers as well are here today is that uh, one of them is called the Euraxis Science Slam Japan and uh, as Kaczynski said, this is the third edition we organize um, here, um, and it's the first time it is hosted by uh, Tokyo Metropolitan University. And once again, I want to thank all of the staff and also the institution, Tokyo Metropolitan University, for uh, hosting this uh, event. One other point uh, that you may not know yet, but now you know you are filmed. Please take a look back side of the room. You are filmed and this event is actually streamed live on YouTube. Uh, so if you have a copyright on your face, it's, um, you have just enough time to put your C on, uh, uh, on your face. So uh, thanks very much to our sponsor to this event. Yeah, that's why we are all here. Uh, New Raxis Science Slam Japan 2015. Okay, what is a Science Slam? Why do we need to uh, do more in research communication? Why is it important? Uh, I believe both of our uh, speakers at the World Cup Address had a very good point. But, let me tell you, I was also a physicist before, and nobody outside of myself, in my family, and even my friends, were scientists. And probably they all thought I was doing things like this, I guess, even though I was a physicist and not a chemist. But anyway, also, I wasn't one, but I guess uh, many people in the social sciences, maybe psychology, um, anthropology, maybe. Maybe. Well, this is how people look at you. I don't know. But this has to change because this isn't the true you, is it? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, also, looking at books all day long, just staying inside all day long. This is what many people think, oh yeah, it's equations, 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 of course we do them as well. But anyway, so why is it important? And again, our welcome address speakers had all of these points, funding. Nowadays, it's more and more difficult to get funding to do your research, to really do what you are, uh, well, what you are involved in and what you want to do. So when you have to apply for a grant, you have to defend your project. To defend your project, you should be a good communicator. Innovation, of course, it leads to new ideas. If you communicate your ideas to someone who's not in your field, for example, or right next to you in the next door, I don't know. Maybe he has a new idea, and maybe it will lead to an innovation. Responsibility as a researcher. I don't think I need to tell you a lot about this, but we remember uh, lots of examples of bad communications as, as researchers. So, your responsibility is also to communicate on your research so that normal, normal people 
Just usually, your mother, your friends, they understand what you mean. And also, lifelong education. It's never bad to learn things from, from someone else. But to do that, you need to also be a good listener, and they need to be a good communicator, and yourself as well. So, all of these comes in handy if you want to have a career in research. And the point is also, and I'm sure many of you experience this, is to go, especially when you are in a classroom. I don't want to put the pressure on any of the professors here today. But the point is to, <laughs> to, to, um, to bring the, uh, the, the uh, listeners from this state to uh, this state. Yeah, this is definitely better, right? Well, of course, the uh, color codes of the uh, photograph is also a little bit, well, advantageous to this one. But anyway, this is what we would want science and research to be. So, how to judge us now? You are all here today not only to listen to people, but also to judge them and to give your opinion and to exchange with other people uh, on two things, if it works. Creativity and communication. Yes, being communicative is good, and being creative is also good. And why is that? Communication helps you get your message through, and creativity helps you engage to your audience, be it one-on-one -on -one conversation or like today with a big audience. So that's important. And how do we do that at the uh, Euraxis Science Lab Japan 2015? I believe you all have uh, a group member, and I believe you all have a group leader, and we will all have to, after the slams, uh, discuss between each other, and you will have to reflect on the concepts that are here, the four criteria, uh, in order to, well, get a ranking to people. Competition is, well, sometimes it can be borderline, but competition is also good, especially if you are uh, a good communicator. So, you really have to uh, get in your mind these four criteria. This is how you will judge the slams. Concept is the structure of the slam. Is it well structured? And the structure, is it uh, in agreement with its message? Originality. What I am doing right now is not very original, especially if I am standing here like this. No, it should be more original. It should be engaging to yourself. Accessibility as well. If I use a lot of complicated words or complicated sentences, maybe you won't understand. Uh, and if I use complex scientific uh, processes that you don't know also, it's, it's not very accessible. Style and execution is basically, well, the, uh, uh, not English proficiency, but the flow, the level of confidence, the level of preparation of the style. So whenever you will discuss with your group leaders at the end of each slam, you will have to keep in mind these. And all of these are of equal importance. Even if yourself, of course, you would like to have a very original presentation, all of these have equal importance. Yeah, it's uh, Each slam, each slam will have exactly, not one second more, ten minutes. 10 minutes to tell us about their research. After each slam, we will have five minutes to discuss about the contents of the slam, how was it, was it creative, etc. Et so we have five slammers today, and at the end of the fifth slam, we have 15 minutes, so a little bit more, to discuss all of the candidates and to uh, get a consensus within your own group on the ranking. You will need to, uh, at the end of these 15 minutes, have your top three ranking. This is very important because, well, basically you will decide uh, who wins and also who's second and third. And this is very important also why it is because the winner of the event um, will get a flight to Europe. Not only a flight to Europe, but also uh, uh, a possibility to meet people and to have a visit of European research institutions with whom maybe he or she will start a uh, new research cooperation or a mobility project. So that's it for today.